the most important aspects in a hunting game, if not the most important aspect in a hunting game, is going to be your weapon. So in today's video we're going to be speaking about katanas, because I'm, I'm a weebo like that. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to... it's just based on my opinion, right? And this is for beginner uh, early game, right? So we have early, mid game and end game. We're going to be speaking about early game. These weapons were my favorites when I was in early game and they carried me through through most of the entirety of mid game as well. They are very very cool weapons that you can get very easily in the game and uh, I'm going to give you my reasoning as to why did I choose these weapons for B in this top. So let's begin with the uh, very first one that we are going to have in consideration for this kind of top which is going to be this one the Edge Stone Katana 3 and I am going to give you my reasoning for this now one thing that you do need to have in mind granted is that when you have to craft this thing we are going to take into account the damage of the weapons and how easy it is to get them and how many buffs uh, can you can you have because that's a very very important thing in your character building so the downside of this weapon is that uh, it's not going to have that much buffs uh, inherited skills, we're going to be speaking about inherited skills <laughs> on a different video, but for now that is a downside. Do have in mind though that in early game it doesn't really matter that much. Building a weapon doesn't really matter that much early game. Early game what you want to do, what you want to have is pure raw damage. And if you compare it to the rest of the weapons like for example like so this is one of the ones that it's going to be unlocked at the point that you have this one it's just going to stop in here 100 damage versus 175 I have all, all of the rest of them unlocked but at this point in time early game this is what you're going to get as for um, this one right here you're going to be stopped in here so you're going to be stuck in this one 95 damage in this one you're going to be stopped in here you're going to have a hundred hundred and five damage with 80 fire damage so you see my point this is the highest damaging one without having this one in consideration this one has a little bit more damage and I do believe that the inherent skill that it has it's a little bit better but the thing is that you're going to require a light stone for this one and you do not get access to light stones until you manage to get to the final map of the game so that is a bummer that is why we have the edge stone katana because for this one you're going to be needing mirror stones and you can grind for mirror stones on the very first boss that you're going to fight starting chapter 2 which is very very early in the game the next weapon that we're going to have access very early in the game and that is going to outclass damage of them all and it's also going to have a little bit more than this one it has 10% more critical hit chance it also has 190 damage what I like about this weapon is that you are going to be able to inherit at least one skills, so, well, two skills, that it's going to be Wind Wield and Katakuri Coordination Remedy. Wind Wield is going to occasionally reduce your adversary's wind resilience for a while when making a wind-based attack. You're really, not, you're really not going to benefit from this one because this one doesn't really have uh, wind damage, so that is a bummer, of course. But uh, this one recovers health when attacking, incorporating basic Kakuri connects. So basically, when you're jumping from your ma building made Kakuris or when using your torch, you're going to be healing, which is very, very nice. And the good thing about this thing is that you're only going to need to fight a Sap Scorch, and then after that, you're going to have to fight a Fume Beak. The Fume Beak early game it's going to be a little bit more difficult to fight. A little bit more difficult to get but uh, as soon as you finish your main quest line in the second map you can come back to the to the first map and once you come back to the first map you are going to find the monster in here you're not going to be required to kill it for any hunts for any quest for any side quest not at this point for for sure but if you want to be overpowered <laughs> early game, get this weapon, you can most definitely come to this map once you have unlocked the aisle 
and the monster is going to be there. Once you kill the monster, you're going to be able to craft the weapon. So that is very, very, very nice indeed. And then finally, the final weapon that we are going to regard as the best beginner weapon that I, at least that I can see is going to be this one, the Yashima Katana. Oh boy, 250 damage. Thing is that it's going to have negative affinity or <laughs> negative crit critical hit chance. We're not going to be worrying about that one that much because at the end of the day, at this point in time, we're not making a build that much. We're not on end game. We want raw power. We want just pure damage to be able to punch, to carry us throughout the rest of the game. So. For sure, this is something that you can use early game. Some part, uh, it's going to carry you as well through mid game. It's just an all in all, a very, very amazing good weapon, and different than the other ones. You well, first and foremost, it's very easy to acquire. You just have to kill a couple of grid dogs, and uh, yeah, the very two first enhancements is going to require a grid dog. And the third enhancement is going to require Mirror Stone, which again you get from that boss that uh, appears once you start the second chapter, the one that attacks uh, Minato. That is the place where you can farm for the Mirror Stones. That said, this one is going to inherit Reutilization, which recovers a small amount of Karakuri thread when Conjure Karakuri is dismantled, which basically gives you Karakuri back, which is amazing. Nimble Fingered boosts the rate of which healing water can be drunk, and this is... I can't stress enough how amazing this thing is for early game. Uh, I'm sorry, not that one. Manifestation Release greatly boosts attack at the expense of Accelerated re Release Gotch Depletion. And yes, I do believe that this one is very cool, because at the end of the day you're not going to be able to use all of your release bar when the enemy is uh, back on its feet. So yeah, it's basically more damage well, to, to punish the enemy. Finally, we have Destruction. Art makes all parts of Kimono easier to destroy, which is going to make you... Uh, going to give you a little bit more of an easy time for you to destroy parts and remember that when you destroy the parts of a monster you do have the chance, you do have the possibility to climb on top of that monster and activate your hunter's arm which is always going to give you buffs, stun the enemy, give you Karakuri back. So yeah, by all means this is the best one of them all. This is what I use throughout most of the mid game as well. This is what allowed me to kill basically everything without having to worry about anything else because this weapon is just that, that good. Of course you're going to be swapping it for something better at a later date. As you can see my weapons have been, up I have been upgrading my weapons so on and so forth. But yeah, very very cool weapon indeed. If you find the information useful, if you like the video, Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and <laughs> now I told you today you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful person. Have a beautiful day and I'll be seeing you got them gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Goodbye.